You're still watching Ways. Now, today is National Telephone Day. Around the world, there are about 9.82 billion mobile phones. Now, some people predicted that the landline will be obsolete by 2020. However, there are still about 931 million landlines around the world. In Nigeria, at the end of um, 2018, there were over 36 million smartphone users, representing a penetration of 18.37%. Now, while the number of smartphone users might have increased year on year, it is penetrating, um, its penetration is still very insignificant for hmm. smartphone users. Well, um, what I can say to this effect is that not, um, telephones are something that we are practically used to. In those days, you have it in almost, you don't have it in almost every house in um, Nigeria. But as time went by, thanks to Obasanjo and GSM, we now got used to it. So I think um, that um, the use of telephones should be encouraged, especially not for children below the ages of um, 10. You're talking of mo mobile phone now. Mm -hmm. they're, they're saying I'm that talking about and 931 mm -hmm. million landlines. It's just so strange when I'm hearing that because I'm I, wondering, do we still have landlines in houses? We still do. Really? We still do. But um, currently, um, it's not in every house. Maybe not in... And actually, they act, they've actually turned their handsets or mobile phones to their landline or home phones, mm. actually, in most homes in Nigeria. Yeah, that's what I'm... Because I think so, in, in Nigeria, it's not the numbers for mobile... Like, land, land phones are not yes. as much. Mobile if, phone, I think, came and swept... Even if you see it now, it's kind of strange when you see it. Back in the days when we had the CDMA phones, people could get used to it. But right now, it's the GSM has actually... Well, I still have a land phone in my office, if you ask it. I don't. I don't <laughs> I do. have a land phone. I do. At all. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you see, what did you find for us in the news? It's all about education. Okay. So, as an educationist. Um, as an educator. I call myself an edupreneur. <laughs> oh, all right, edupreneur. <laughs> so... Um, in the news, what we what I I discovered was that the um, the um, head of um, TRCN actually discovered that said that the lockdown time for teachers will help the teachers um, become digitally um, savvy. Uh, savvy, yes. So I think it is essential that teachers get to know more about um, technology tools for education, tools that they can use to actually teach, because this lockdown has actually exposed the lapses we have in education, what we don't have, what we thought we knew we, um, while we're teaching children, we discovered that it's a new ball game entirely. Now you're no longer in classroom to take care of the children and call the children to order because you, uh, you have to interact with them online. Distance learning and online, they are two different poles entirely, but I won't go into all that. Which also brings me to the idea, um, idea by um, Nasarawa um, State, which um, currently has not in any form given the children online learning. So the children are practically at home, mm -hmm. not doing anything, just helping their parents at home, working. And this has caused the children to have a gap. There is a stop gap there of learning for these children. Unlike Lagos State. Well, even in Lagos, well, thank God we have the Commissioner of Education that will talk to us much later. Exactly. You know, but even in Lagos, I still wonder, you know, when we are saying Lagos, we should not be counting ourselves as Lagos because the bulk of the people that are considered to be mm. um, students in Lagos, they are still in the public schools. Like the, the numbers are, are no. more in the public schools. That's and do they have access? to technology, what they are doing, from That's my own understanding. That's why the Lagos State Government is currently in partnership with uh, Microsoft and ATB mm. to ensure that the teachers are trained. Awesome. So that is supposed to start in um, uh, next week, 27th of April. So I think it's a, it's a good step towards the right direction, especially oh. for the teachers in public schools. Oh, okay. That's perfect. Then. But my, care, my take here is that I have a little bit of concern. Those children in public schools, are they tech savvy themselves? Well, Will that is a question we would ask um, the Commissioner for Education exactly. when she comes up. Yeah. So my story is quite, um, is quite a troubling one. Mm. And this is a call to the president. I am calling the president to actually look into Kano State because 
we have had several reports. I, I mean, I remember on this table, I was reporting some young boys replicating hand washing into a bowl and drinking the water. Exactly. Now, in Kano State, there have been issues of holding football matches. You know, while there is a lockdown, videos are facing online of people going to watch football matches while there's a lockdown and also they were not maintained i mean in a football match no social distance no, social no distancing. nothing oh then there's a high rise there was a high high death toll in kano that up till today we do not have any figure i mean what is causing this um death, uh, death. One of the people that was uh, in the mortuary, I mean, in the grave site was saying that in a day they buried about 70 people. Till today, the governor of Kano State has not come out to say this is the cause Reason. for this death. Now, again, um, there is a, a, an audio that has been going viral all day. You know, in fact, I thank um, the, the news department. They're already investigating that audio. Mm -hmm. A 70-year-old woman... A, um, accusing NCDC, Kano Branch, of not doing their job to the point of the death of her son-in-law. Oh you know, that, that, that audio, when I listened to it, I was really heartbroken. According to the woman, she claims that they have shut down the NCDC um, center in Kano yeah. and also that her son-in-law, they kept on calling them for two days. And this is not the only person that has been making Complained. this complaint. So it is not, it's no longer funny because Kano has a huge population in that state. They have a huge population. Mm -hmm. When we heard the Emir of Kano saying so many things, you know, it seemed like the man was trying to, the you know, you know, or the mean. former, somebody, sorry, thank you, the former Emir saying some, I mean, he was accusing the state gov governors, Governor. the northern governors of not doing certain things. Now we're seeing it playing out. This is wickedness, I'm telling you. I, that we watch our people die, and it is just heartbreaking. I think this this calls to mind that the government should um, actually pay more attention to the. This is not paying attention. The, if we the, have to call to international the, community, it's it look, me? it doesn't. It's not see, paying attention. Not, if we have to call international, not, some people, some governors have to be arrested and jailed in Nigeria. They have to be. Uh, no. Uh, well, I disagree with you on that. You but, know but that's going to play they're out. They're not taking action. I mean, if if uh, if the uh, former Emir was actually um, boosted out of office, what do you think will happen to this com uh, present Emir if he decides to say anything? And at the same time, if another governor comes in to say, "Oh, you 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 are not doing your job," I think it's like a cartel. They no, will not listen to each other. This particular governor, Governor mm. Gantude, has mm. we've had too many things. Right from his days of shoving dollar up of, uh, in, inside his cap that nobody said anything about it's just too much look at where we are now mm -hmm. so do we want to register more death the right the death toll in Kano. now this woman is crying out because currently now her cho her daughter the children her grandchildren they are all locked down nobody's testing it does not make any sense for you to have that much population if you Has are not competent ncdc in Kano have, have they said anything about this have they debunked the if story? you if you are not competent about i mean of handling that state say mm -hmm. you cannot handle the state and give it to somebody that's much competent to handle the crisis and do you think that's all i you, can say do you think he will say that <laughs> well let's be realistic this is just really sad let's be realistic you can't have people dying he in won't. our country he won't but the bottom line still remains that he should do the needful he should do the needful okay so i think i'll leave it there <laughs> we're talking education today and we have the commissioner of education for lagos state joining us right after the break please stay with us we'll be right back <laughs>